Welcome to today's lesson on solving radical equations. That means these equations have radicals in them. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay. Um, solving radical equations. What is a radical equation? A radical equation is an equation that contains a variable inside a radical. Imagine. <laughs> How do you solve a radical equation? Step number one, get the radical alone. That means isolate the radical. Number two, undo the radical sign by using an exponent. So just like when you have an x squared in a problem and you wanna get rid of the squared, you take the square root. So now when you have a square root, to get rid of it, you square it. Hey, okay. Number three, get x by itself. So after the radical's gone, it's a regular equation. Example number one. We have eight examples that we're going to do straight up. And then I have six try on your own problems. Okay? So number one, five plus the square root of x plus one equals 16. First thing is get the radical by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and move that five because it's in my way and it needs to get out of my way. Isolate the radical. So subtract 5. Minus 5. Minus 5. Hey. And then I'm going to get square root of x plus 1 equals 11 because 16 minus 5 is 11. Okay. So I already have the radical by itself. I like when that happens. So I'm going to undo the radical with an exponent. So it's a square root. So that means I have to square it. And if I do it on one side, I have to do it to the other. Oh, so smart. Okay, so if I square something under a square root, basically I just cancel out the square root. So I'm just left with x plus 1 on one side. But when I squared the 11 on the other side, 11 squared is 121. So now it's a regular equation. Get rid of that 1, isolate x. X equals 120. Oh my goodness. That's pretty easy. Now, just like with rational equations like we did earlier, you need to check your answers. Um, there will be extraneous solutions. I know you guys love those, so make sure you plug back in the 120. Make sure it's a true statement. Moving on. Okay, so solve the radical equation 7 cube root 5x minus 7 equals 84. I'm going to get rid of that 7. Divide by 7 on one side. Divide by 7 on the other side. This equation got to keep it balanced, baby. Undo the radical with the exponent. Okay? So... Now that the 7 is gone, I got to undo the radical, okay? It is a cube root. So can I square it to undo it? No. I have to cube it to undo it. Pay attention, okay? If I do it on one side, I have to do it to the other side. So 5x minus 7 equals 17, 28. That's a big old number. Yes, if I multiply 12 times 12 times 12, it gives me 17, 28. So I'm going to solve like normal now. Isolate x. So we're going to add 7 plus 7 plus 7. 5x equals 17, 35. Divide by 5. Boop. Boop x equals 347. That's a big number, but it is your answer. Exam oh, you need to check your answer. Put Plug that thing in. Plug that bad boy in, okay? All right, example number three. Out of eight. Stay with me, okay? Um, isolate the radical. Oh my goodness, Miss B, the radical is already isolated. Well, less work for you, right? So my radical is already isolated. I love it when that happens. Um, so I'm just going to jump to undoing the radical with an exponent. It is a cube root. 
What exponent do you use to undo a cube? A three, good job. So the radical three and the power of three cancel each other out, okay? Just like multiplication cancels out division or addition cancels out subtraction, a cube root is canceled by a cube power, all right? So I'm just left with 3x minus 4 on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, um, 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 times 2, 8. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and isolate x. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. And then we're going to divide by 3. And x equals 4. What should you do? Check your answer. Some of these answers will be extraneous. That's your job to check, not mine. Yours. What if there are radicals on both sides of the equations? So let's say you have radicals on both sides of the equation. What you want to do is you must square or cube both sides of the equation first, okay? So what does that mean? So if I have the square root of 8x plus 6 equals 3 times the square root of x, usually I would tell you to isolate the radical, but in this case I have two radicals so they can't be alone. So I'm going to undo the radical with the exponent. They're both square roots, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides of the equation. Square, square. On the left hand side, I just get 8x plus 6. And then on the right hand side, what's going to happen is that 3 squared is 9 and the square root of x squared is just going to turn out to be x. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm going to isolate x. Subtract 8x from both sides. I'm going to get 6 equals x. But make sure you check your answers because sometimes you will get extraneous answers. Okay, solve the radical equation. Again, I have radicals on both sides of the equation. I usually would isolate, but in this case, I'm gonna undo by using an exponent, okay, first, because I can't isolate my radicals. So I'm gonna get seven x plus two equals nine, because three squared is nine, okay? And then I undid the radical, so I'm just left in parentheses with what was under the radical, which is 3x minus 2. I'm going to distribute that 9 into the parentheses. Um, I'm going to get 27x minus 18, and I'm going to subtract x. 2 equals 20x minus 18. I'm going to add 18 to both sides. I'm going to get 20 equals 20x. I'm going to divide by 20. And that's going to give me x equals 1. Ding. Okay. Again, make sure you check your answers because sometimes you will get extraneous answers. Okay. Solve the radical equation. But Miss B, there's no radical there. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. What do you do? Well, you should have already learned that an exponent of one third is the same thing as a cube root, okay? So I'm just gonna change that exponent, that rational exponent to a cube root. And now, bada bing, bada boom, voila, this is a problem I already know how to do. So the radical is isolated, I'm just going to undo the radical with an exponent. Doop, doop. Look at me, 5x plus 7 equals 27, because 3 cubed is 27. 3 times 3 times 3. All right, isolate x. Subtract 7 from both sides. 5x equals 20, divide by 5, x equals 4. Check your answer. Sometimes they do not work, so you have to check the answers. Okay, now the next two examples are a little bit tricky, okay? Um, and they are tricky because, so my, my radical is already isolated. I'm just gonna undo it with an exponent. So it's a square root, I'm gonna square both sides. 
Now the problem is, is that on that right hand side, I can't just say five squared minus x squared and move on with my life. I have to double it because of that minus in the middle. If it was just five x touching each other, no minus in the middle, then I get to say 25x squared. But because of that minus, it means that I'm actually going to have to double distribute or foil, as some people would say, okay? Um, which is entails a little bit more work. So notice I got five times five is 25, x times negative five is negative five x. Um, then again, x times four, uh, negative x times 5 is negative 5x and then x times x is x squared so I'm going to combine my like terms swoop them up there right in the middle okay and that's going to give me negative 10x in the middle I at the same time decided that I was gonna rearrange so I put the x squared first then I put the negative 10x and then I put the plus 25 okay because it has to be in descending order. That's the way that we like it in math. So notice I have a quadratic. When I have a quadratic, what do I do differently to solve the problem? I have to set the equation equal to zero. So that means I need to move the negative 3x to the other side. So that's that salmon kind of uh, orange. And then I have to move the 33 to the other side. So that's the brighter orange. So when I do that, I'm going to get x squared minus 7x minus 8. And of course, it's a quadratic. So what am I going to tell you to do? Factor. Okay, good. So once I'm factoring, I'm going to get x minus 8 and x plus 1. And I'm going to solve. So I'm going to get x equals positive 8, x equals negative 1. Now I have two answers. I'm going to go ahead with my original problem. I'm going to check my answer. I'm going to choose the 8. Okay. So negative 3 times 8 for the x. Instead of x, I'm using 8. So on the other side, instead of x, I'm also going to use the 8. Okay. Negative 3 times 8 is going to give me negative 24. Okay. On the other side of my equation, 5 minus 8 gives me negative 3. So I'm going to do negative 24 plus 33. It's going to give me a 9. And I need to take the square root of 9. It's going to give me 3. Does 3 equal negative 3? No, absolutely not. So therefore, that is an extraneous solution. So the only solution to this problem is going to be a negative 1. I should also check the negative 1, um, but just trust me for now. <laughs> How did I know to check the 8? Well. I'm a math teacher and I'm a genius, so hello. Okay, any questions? It's my only answer. The other one is extraneous. Okay, example number eight, the last example. We made it, people. Okay, um, again, I wanna try to isolate my radical, but it's already isolated. I love when that happens. So I'm going to undo the radical with an exponent, okay? I need to square it. So notice on the right-hand side, when I square it, I have to double because there's a plus sign in the middle. If it was just negative x4 or 4 minus 4x, whatever, it would be fine to just be like, 16x squared, but I can't do that because of the plus sign. It means I have to distribute, but I got to double distribute, okay? So negative x times negative x is positive x squared. Negative x times 4 is negative 4x. 4 times negative x is negative 4x, and then 4 times 4 is 16. Combine like terms. 
swoop that up right there in the middle. I'm going to get x squared minus 8x plus 16. Hey. Okay, so now it is a quadratic. When I have a quadratic, what do I do? Set it equal to zero. Okay, good. So first we're going to move the 9x, then we're going to move the 28. I'm going to get x squared plus x because 8 plus 9 is 1x. And then 16 minus 18 is negative. 16 minus 28 is negative 12. Factor x minus 3, x plus 4. Solve. x equals 3, x equals negative 4. You should check your answers. Let me pick one of the answers. We'll see. Oh, we picked a negative four. Look at us. Are you recording? Oh, I thought it wasn't recording. Anyway, um, I put a negative four in for x, but I do it on one side. You know, got to plug it in on the other side. So first, negative nine times negative four is going to give me positive 36. Negative negative 4 on the other side is going to give me just a positive 4. 36, or, and then the 4 plus the 4, the orange 4 plus the blue 4, is going to give me just an 8 on that side. 36 plus 28 on the other side is going to give me 64. The square root of 64 is 8, ladies and gentlemen. Does 8 equal 8? Yes, it does. Those answers work, guys. You should check the other one. I'm saving us some time for the sake of YouTube and videos and oh my gosh all right so make sure you pay attention to that both of those answers work i love it okay so that finishes part one of this video what am i going to tell you to do i am going to ask you to take out a separate sheet of paper go back and try the examples and see if you know what you are doing okay part two of the lesson is just more examples for you to try on your own so you can take out that separate sheet of paper and go watch that video and do those things on your own okay